everybody! Happy Thursday! Well today I'm doing the I Love Musicals tag because it is true, I am obsessed with musicals. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Actually, probably my favorite thing to do, besides Disneyland, is to go to New York City and to see Broadway shows. <sighs> I also love to see local musicals, high school musicals, really anything that's musically oriented. So I decided to make a game out of this so you all can participate. So you have to pay attention because there is a very intricate, specific point system that I have created. So here's how the point system works. You get one point if you've seen the same show that I have seen, anywhere, doesn't matter, doesn't have to be on Broadway. You get two points if you've seen any show that I've seen on Broadway, so you would have had one of these. And you get three points if you're a crazy diehard and you've seen more shows than I have on Broadway, which probably a ton of you have, because I live in Oregon and it's hard to get over there. But I feel very lucky that I've been able to see so many Broadway shows, and if you get a chance to go to New York, I highly recommend you see Broadway show because it is transformative. So good. Oh my gosh. So the first time I ever went to New York City, I was in high school and my mom and dad and I went and we saw a funny thing happen on the way to the forum with Whoopi Goldberg, which was so funny and amazing. We saw Titanic, the musical, because it had just won the Tony for Best Musical, and it was pretty good. Um, it wasn't one of my favorites, but it was cool because the whole stage tilted and the whole, everything slid. I'm going in order to the best of my memory. So my junior year of high school, my high school theater department went to New York and it was so awesome and we got to see Phantom of the Opera. You'll notice a theme in a certain show that I've seen way too many times on Broadway. We went back in the alleyway right next to the theater and the actors were coming out and we got to meet the Phantom. It was Howard McGillis at the time and he was amazing and so cute. And we saw Annie Get Your Gun, and that was with Bernadette Peters, which was incredible. If you're a Broadway person or a musical person, you're probably obsessed with Bernadette Peters too, or at least have a deep respect for that curly redhead because she is amazing. My first playbill is Thoroughly Modern Millie. I actually saw this twice on Broadway with Sutton Foster. I saw it with my parents, and then years later I went back with Peter and I made sure we saw it again. And I basically just cried the whole time. It's not a sad musical by any means. Peter said that was one of the more entertaining parts of the show, is just looking over and watching me cry through it, so. <laughs> She's always been someone I look up to as an actress on Broadway. I've seen her in a bunch of shows. So my next trip was when I studied at CAP 21, which is part of the Tisch School for the Arts in New York. It was a musical theater training program, and I wanted to go and study in New York, so it was just for a summer, but I saw a ton of shows that summer because, of course, I was let loose in the city. So I saw 42nd Street, I saw Phantom again. I saw Little Shop of Horrors with Joey Fatone from NSYNC, and he was amazing. Wonderful Town! I bet I'm gonna get this point and a lot of you will not because it's not a very well-known show, but uh, it was really fun. Wow, okay, this isn't a musical, but it's one of my playbills, so we're counting it. Jefferson Mays won the Tony for it. He played over 40-some different characters. It's an amazing, amazing show, and you should look it up if you don't know about it. Toxic Audio! Actually, this is technically off-Broadway, but what's so fun is I just met the creator of the show the other day. He came into town and uh, was part of a festival that we produced. They are an acapella group, as many of you know. My husband and I are very into the acapella scene. And it was an off-Broadway concert show that they put on, and it was amazing. Wow, Carolina Change, this was such a good show. I also saw this the same summer that I was studying in New York. Look it up, you will love it. Aida! I was sitting in the audience and I hadn't really looked through the program, so I didn't see the names of the actors. The male lead came out on stage and started singing, and I was like, that sounds like Roger from Rent. And sure enough, I looked at my program, and it was Adam Pascal. So I got to see Adam Pascal in Aida on Broadway, and at the time, I had no idea how incredible that was, but now I look back, I'm like, that was a Broadway moment. Phantom. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Thoroughly Modern Millie for the second time with Peter. Another show that Peter and I saw was The Drowsy Chaperone, and it was incredible. We have the best story about this. So we went the week before it opened, and I didn't really realize at that time that New York had preview weeks. I mean, a lot of theaters do that. But uh, basically, you can see the show before it technically opens on Broadway. So we were walking by the theater, and I saw all the posters with Sutton Foster, and I was so disappointed we weren't going to see it. But I noticed people in the box office, so we went into the box office and said, what's going on? And they said, oh, it's preview week, you can buy tickets and just see the show, just like normal. So of course, we bought tickets for like the very back row, whatever we could afford, 
We get there the next day and we're like two minutes before curtain, like we're rushing in, of course. We go to the ticket person and he takes our tickets, kind of motions towards the orchestra. So we head down to the lower level and they hand us two other tickets and they're like, all right, here are your seats. We basically, if you could have picked two seats in the theater, those are the seats we had. Probably seven rows up in the center of the theater. So we got to see it before it even opened with Sutton Foster and Peter actually knew one of the guys in the show and it was so funny and so much fun. Highly recommend that show. I saw it in Seattle too. Another show on Broadway that I absolutely loved that didn't do well was Little Women uh, with Sutton Foster, of course. It was so good. Sutton is just captivating. We were like in the third row, we had student tickets. It was great and highly recommend that show. Beautiful music in it um, and just such a good story. Another show that Peter and I went to see that same trip was Take Me Out, and it actually won Best Play that year, just a couple weeks after we sat in New York. And the funny thing about it was our girlfriend said, oh, we've gotta go see the show, you guys. I just heard there are naked guys in it. And at one point, they had a locker room scene where all the guys are showering on stage. But it was so cool and so effective because they had grates on the stage and working showers, and it actually was really, um, I thought it made sense for the show. It wasn't like just random nudity for no reason, but it was really a cool show. Another show that I can't believe I don't have my playbill for is Fiddler on the Roof. I saw it twice this trip when I was in New York studying at Cap 21. I loved the show and it was so beautiful and so well done. I think the last show that I don't have a playbill for that I can remember is Doubt. It's an amazing play. If you've not seen the movie with Meryl Streep, you need to watch it right now. The Producers. It's so funny if you haven't seen The Producers. I highly recommend it. Proof with Anne Heche. That was a really, really fine play. In the Heights. Really, really fun show. <sighs> nice to normal. The one show I had to see when we went to New York and it was unbelievable. And then I actually had the opportunity of being in Next to Normal last year, which was so incredible. It was the most amazing show I've ever been a part of. So if you've seen the show or heard the music, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, look it up, listen to it, you'll fall in love with it. Heavy, really intense show, but so powerful. Memphis! I think this won the Tony for Best Musical. It was so much fun. So this was a recent trip that we took to New York. A friend of ours actually was producing this show, so he got us tickets, so we didn't really know what to expect. The most amazing part of the show was the lead actor, Alan Rickman. Seeing him live as an actor was just really amazing. He was stunning. I cried. War Horse, wow. They create the horses out of like airline cable and steel. So they're like these shells of horses, but they're actually like puppets. So there are actors inside kind of maneuvering the shell of the horse. And then they actually are making the horse sounds. It's incredible what the actors do. Um, so that was the most amazing part. I didn't love it as much as everybody else did I think. Um, it got crazy reviews and I think a lot of it was just the staging was so amazing but it's kind of like glorified Lassie story. It was good. It was good. This is not fair that this is in my playbill collection so I do not get a point for this because Peter saw it without me. I am so ashamed to say I have never seen The Lion King on Broadway but honestly it's because I can't afford it <laughs> and the last time Peter went I just said do it just go because I mean, come on, it's The Lion King. Hello. Okay, this is like <laughs> probably my favorite show I've ever seen on Broadway. And I know that might sound weird. I didn't really want to see it. Literally, I was like sobbing through the whole show. It just is so inspiring and so, oh, everything about it. Number one recommendation, if you can see Billy Elliot on stage, the staging is incredible. And then just like seeing this 12 year old actor having this experience on Broadway and everyone standing, it just was, it was unbelievable. Highly recommend it. West Side Story. They had the actors doing a lot of the lines and some of the music in Spanish. So it was great because being fluent in Spanish, it was so cool to see that way. Um, and it really didn't change the piece too much. It was very true to, if you've seen the movie, it's one of the best ever. Um, so I loved it, loved it, loved it. Jersey Boys! A really recent trip to New York. Last year, my girls' acapella group Synergy made it to New York to compete. And uh, it was fine. I know some of you are probably going to be like, what? I love Jersey Boys! Um, I think part of it was we were sitting like in the very back because we wanted to get reasonably priced seats, but I think a part of the show is just the magic of being like down front and center with everybody, and there's so much energy. And I was with a group of high school girls, so um, some of them loved the music, but others were kind of like, Sherry baby, like I don't get it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. But I'm excited for the movie. Another show that Peter got to see that I have not seen yet. I heard it was good, so I don't get a point. 
Betrayal. Um, really great actors. Daniel Craig, Rachel Weiss. The play was not very good. The acting was good. Meh. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the most recent trip we took to New York was this last Christmas. And yes, I was very pregnant, so that was an interesting trip. But Murder for Two is one of the most funny shows I've ever seen. I think it might be the funniest show I've ever seen. Um, probably because I actually wet myself. Just partly. Yes, granted, I was pregnant, but I mean, come on. I was laughing so hard. So it's off-Broadway, but it got amazing reviews, and the reason I saw it was because one of my best friends knows the writer, and she said, you have to go see this show. It's really funny. It's basically two guys on stage, both play piano incredibly, so they accompany each other. So one will sing a song, and the other guy's playing for him, and the other guy will sing a song, and the other guy plays for him. Um, and one guy plays a detective, and the other guy, Jeff Blumenkrantz, plays like 40-some characters, and he's all the suspects. It was so funny, and it's it's still playing, so seriously, if you're in New York, it's the next show you should see. It's so good. It's so good. So funny. Highly recommend it. Oh, Big Fish, love this so much. This was our most recent trip to New York, and we saw it on closing weekend. It didn't do very well. Um, I think that happens sometimes with these musicals that are based on movies, but we loved it. It was the most beautifully staged show I've ever seen. Incredible effects. This was another moment I had where I didn't realize who I was seeing on stage, but I saw Norbert Leo Butts play the role, and he is from the last five years, and catch me if you can, he's amazing, he's like a legend. And so getting to see him was incredible. Okay, and last but not least, one of my favorite shows, Newsies! We just saw this on our recent trip for Christmas, and Ashland loved it. He was inside my belly just kicking away. I know some of you may think it's too cheesy, but uh, it's so fun. Such a blast. Okay, so I'm tallying up my points, and you guys can do the same. Okay, so I'm giving myself the middle of the road point total. So if you've seen between zero and 15 shows, then I'm giving you the South Pathetic Award because, I mean, come on, you can get to more than 15 shows. I guess it depends on how old you are, but I mean, if you live anywhere that has any kind of arts program, you can go see high school shows or local shows. So if you have 15 to 30 points, anywhere in there, you get the Broadway Baby Award. If you're between 30 and 50 points, you are the thoroughly musically minded. That's kind of pathetic, but. That's all I could think of. My takeoff on Thoroughly Modern Millie, get it? Uh, okay. And then if you are over 50 points, you get the Die Hard Diva Award because you are a hardcore musical theater person. I want to hang out with you and go see a show the next time you see one. So I would love to know how you scored and don't be ashamed if you got the South Pathetic Award. You have room to grow and you have time in your life to see more shows. I promise you that. <laughs> so please post below what you scored. Are you South Pathetic, a Broadway baby, thoroughly musically minded, or a diehard diva. What's actually really exciting is Peter and I have a New York trip planned. It's kind of a business trip, but we're there for two nights. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe he and Ashlyn can hang out in the hotel and Mama can go see a musical. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. It was so fun talking about all the shows that I've seen and, and sharing with you. And hopefully many of you have been able to see a Broadway musical or a musical on stage. There's nothing like it, no matter where you see a show. It's just so magical, in my opinion. I'm also gonna give you a little hint uh, about the next song that I'm covering, and it's from a Broadway musical. I hope you're excited about it. All right, thanks again for watching, you guys, and I will see you next week.